Good day, everyone, and welcome to 2025. My name is Brick. I'll be your friendly neighborhood aim technician, and today we are talking about the CAN output feature that's on most of our data loggers. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is that feature even used for? As with a lot of CAN stuff, the sky's the limit. Prime example, though, I've been working with Sean Bassett this year. Uh, if you don't know who that is, maybe you at least know his insane all carbon fiber 240Z. Here. And he's trying to get some more driver focused data into his car. He's going to be installing an SW4 and an MXT Strata in his car. And the MXT is essentially going to function as a slave to the SW4. But to do that, the two are going to need to share information. So to get to this feature, we're of course going to go into Race Studio 3. If you don't already have this program, it is free to download at our website. There's a link down in the description. We'll go over to configurations. And in this test, I'm gonna be using an SW4, sending information to an MXT, but this is gonna be much the same with any of our data loggers, the whole MX series, the Evo 4S, Evo 5, PDMs, Solo 2 DL, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. So we're gonna open up Sean's steering wheel four configuration that we've been working on. If we go over to the ECU stream tab, we'll see we've already got his ECU set up in here. So all of these channels are gonna be available to send to the MXT as well. And then we'll go all the way down here to the CAN output tab. Now here you're gonna see tabs for CAN1 and CAN2. Since we're already using CAN1 for the ECU, we're gonna be outputting on the CAN2 bus. So from here, if you're communicating with a third party device that's not CAN configurable, you'll need to refer to the tech specs for that particular their product in order to configure these messages. If you're communicating with another openly programmable CAN device like our MXT or another third party device, you can pretty much specify all this stuff yourself. So we're gonna choose one megabit per second. The CAN IDs don't really matter. The only thing is they need to be in hexadecimal format. Don't know what that is? Not a problem either. Open your calculator, click these three bars, select programmer, and just type in the number that you wanna use. Personally, I start with 100 and work in increments of 10. That way, if I wanna add something in between those at some point, I can easily do that. So we'll start with 100. As you can see, the hexadecimal format is right here. So 100 in hexadecimal is 64. So over here, we have 64. And I've used that same convention for all of these CAN IDs. The next one was 110. So as you can see, that's 6E. We got 6E over here. After that was 120, 78. We got 78 over here, so on and so forth. You get the idea? Yeah. Then if you actually click on the CAN ID here, it's gonna open up the CAN header details. Here's where you type in your hexadecimal CAN ID. You can choose if the message is gonna be 11 bits or an extended 29 bits. We have up to eight bytes of information that we can send here. The byte order doesn't really matter as long as it's all matching. So little Indian would be small numbers to big numbers. Big Indian would be big numbers to small numbers. Frequency is just the number of times per second we're sending that information. So this is gonna depend on if the information we're sending is very time sensitive or not. If you're sending a measure like water temp that doesn't change very quickly, one to five hertz is probably good. If you're sending suspension travel, that's something that moves very quickly. So you'll wanna max that sampling frequency. After you're done setting those functions, you'll just click okay. After we've got the CAN ID information set, we're gonna actually click on each individual byte to choose what we wanna send there. So I'll click here. That'll open up the CAN payload details. Now, a lot of this stuff is gonna matter a lot more if you're sending to something that is non-CAN programmable. These things are already gonna be specified. In this case, since we're dealing with two freely programmable CAN devices, we're just gonna choose what we want and we'll be able to duplicate that on the receive side of things. So we'll just keep the number of bytes at two, the data format at signed integer, and you'll see you have the options here for a static value or a counter. But in this case, we're just sending some channels over. So we're gonna use channel and you just click on the channel drop down right here to select which channel you want to send over and click okay. You can choose the unit of measure and you'll see on a lot of the channels, they will automatically put a multiplier here. And the reason it does that is to give us more decimal places. So when this is received, it's gonna be divided by that same number, which is gonna give us more definition in the channel. So for example, if we were sending a channel like battery voltage and we didn't have very high definition in that channel, it will round up or down. So if it's 12.1 volts in reality, it might be rounding down to 12. If it's 12.5 volts, it might be rounding up to 13. So that's why we want to have high definition in these channels. Once you're done with that, just click OK. So and after that, I've just repeated that same process for all of these channels that I want to send over to our MXT Strata. Once you've finished with all of that, you're done. All you have to do is remember to hit save so it saves on your computer and transmit it over to the device so those changes take effect. Now we need to talk about the MXT or the receiving side of things, which is actually made really easy by Ray Studio 3. All we have to do here is click this create CAN input protocol button. So that'll bring you to this page here where you can pick either a pre-existing manufacturer or you can add your own. I'll just call this AIM 
test, click OK. And then under the model identifier or model name, we'll also call that aim test. Now under CAN device type, we have ECU, other CAN device. ECU is going to be your CAN 1 stream. Other CAN device would be for your CAN 2 stream. Um, in this case, we'll select ECU so that way it shows up on CAN 1 of the MXT. Then you just select your bus speed and click OK. And now in Race Studio 3, if we go over to our CAN protocols, you'll see there's the test that I just sent over there. You can open that up. You can see all the CAN ID information we've got here, and this is also going to be selectable on the MXT. So if we go to configurations, all configurations, now we'll open our MXT. So in the configuration for the MXT now, we're going to go under ECU stream. And the reason I'm using CAN1 on the MXT is simply because I'm not using it for anything else. We're not using it for an ECU connection or anything like that. There is a CAN2 on the MXT, but you have to get the secondary harness in order to get that. So to save money, save harnessing, uh, we're just going to use the ECU stream or CAN1. So we'll go to change ECU. You'll see we've got aim test, which is what I just called that protocol we made. Aim test again. We'll click on that. And now here you see all the channels that we chose to send over from the SW4 on the MXT. You'll also notice on the ECU stream tab that we have these two options right here. Enable the CAN bus 120 ohm resistor and silent on CAN bus. The 120 ohm resistor will be enabled by default. That's because for CAN communications to work, we need to have 120 ohms of resistance on each end. Really the only time you would have this disabled is if we were in the middle of the bus and there was something else further along. And the silent on CAN bus is just enabling or disabling a bit manager that indicates the presence of errors on the bus. In most cases, we're just gonna wanna leave that unchecked. If we go to the display tab over here, you'll see under the channel groups, we have ECU, and these are gonna be all the channels that we've got coming over from the SW4 that we can select to display on the MXT. So that's it as far as the software and configuration goes. Just to touch on the hardware side of things real quick, uh, in order to wire this up, it's very simple. All you're gonna need to do for the example that I use is connect CAN high and low from CAN 2 on the SW4 to CAN high and low on CAN 1 on the MXT. CAN high goes to CAN high, CAN low goes to CAN low, and boom, you're done. So that's gonna be it today. Now you know how to make two devices talk to each other via CAN. As you can probably tell, this is about as simple as CAN programming gets. In the future, I do plan on doing some more Tech Tips videos on the subject of CAN. But for now, if you are interested in learning more, you can watch the webinars that our CTO Robbie Yeoman did. I put links for those down here in the description. Go check them out. If you found this helpful, give us a like. If you wanna see more, give us a sub. Make sure you gently tap the follow button on Instagram at aimsportsdata. Until next time, stay data-driven, stay awesome, bye.